Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I am Mark J. Aquaviva, um, and this is your weekly Yoga Solutions live broadcast, where I um, share my hints and tips. Um, uh, yeah, the solutions that I've come up with over the last 30 years or so of practice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I didn't get any questions today. I, I would, um, I think I prefer questions. I prefer having questions rather than just sort of um, projecting my own agenda upon you. Um, <clears throat> because the, the reason I do this is to, um, well, it's not, it's not, it's not really to get myself out there. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm less interested these days in, in um, my yoga being a business, much less interested. I'm, 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 I'm much more interested in, con in developing my own yoga journey and um, sharing my work with those that uh, are looking for a similar kind of depth and an outcome from their practice. So I'm, I'm moving towards um, basically <laughs> um, stopping advertising. Uh, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm moving towards that. Because, uh, yeah, I, I, I want to carry on teaching, but it, uh, I don't really need to be a teacher. That's not, that's not where my energy is. It's more about life. And um, so, yeah, so what I'm saying is if, if, if um, for, for these uh, Facebook Lives to continue, for these um, Yoga Solutions Lives to continue, um, ask me a question. Ask me, ask me a question. When, when I post up uh, any questions, um, ask me something. Because then, then I have something to share. And I like, I do enjoy sharing what I have with people that want to know, you know? So, uh, and, that, and that, that will um, motivate me to um, continue with these, uh, with this sort of free resource for people, okay? Um, that being said, I, 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 I yeah, uh, I, d I didn't do one last week because I, I didn't really feel in the mood and I uh, hadn't had any questions. Um, I thought I'd better do one this week. Um, just to keep the rhythm going on, on some level. And um, yeah, today I thought I would have a go at sharing with you my take on headstands and um, what, what they're for, what, what, what they do for you and what you need to know about them. And uh, yeah, the, 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 bottom, the bottom line is that a reason for doing any posture, uh, apart from the simple celebration of being a human being, really, <laughs> and that's most definitely an aspect of it. But you don't, you don't, you don't need a teacher for that. You just do it. You know, if you if you want to do if you want to do headstand because it's fun to do headstand, then just do it. And um, the, the, there's no real inherent problems with it unless you kind of unless you're kind of doing it with uh, the wrong attitude, the wrong, the, for the wrong reason. You know, if you're, if, you're, if you're doing it not as a kind of celebratory thing of what you would like to do, what, how you want to express yourself, then um, that will influence how you do it. And the, and the way you do it is going to lead to uh, possibly complications, especially if you do it with fear. If you do it with fear and an attempt to control as a result of that fear, then you need, you need to create the conditions that make it safe so you don't, you don't enter with that. Because when you're fearful, if you think about how, how you would react in your body, if you're reacting in life uh, generally to fear, there'll be, a con there'll be a sort of contraction where you try and sort of pull in. And that's actually a, a natural response. But if it's fear-based, um, well, uh, yeah, I don't really see any reason for doing headstand, <laughs> because, because why add that complication, you know? Anyway, um, and uh, yeah, the, uh, and the reason I, I, I thought headstand is because it's, it's something that people are fearful of quite often. 
and they're fearful of hurting their necks, they're fearful of falling over and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, one of the things I was taught was to practice falling over. <laughs> um, and, the, the, uh, yeah, the, the, I wasn't intending to do, do show that, but um, let, let's, let's see. Um, yeah, if, if, you, uh, if fear is an issue for you in a headstand, um, then, then um, yeah, practicing falling over isn't a bad thing because you need to uh, find a natural response to letting yourself fall over. And if you're going to fall over, if you're going to fall over, you need to, whoops, <laughs> uh, I'm hardwired not to, but let's see. Yeah, if you're going to fall over, <laughs> you need to allow yourself <clears throat> to do the natural thing, which is curl up. So instead of trying to hold yourself up and brace against falling over, the thing to do is to just curl up. And then when you, when you roll over, it won't be a problem. You'll, you'll roll uh, over in a way that doesn't hurt you. Okay, so that, that, that's one thing you can do. Practice falling over and make that okay. So once, once you've got past the fear thing, then we can look at what headstand, what headstand actually does for you. And it, it's like... Um, it's like any, any kind of balance posture, it, it, all postures are balanced really, because the intention is to let go, you see. The intention is to be able to let go and remain in the posture. So, um, yeah, any balance posture, what, what it does for you is when you let go, when you're not in the business of pushing the ground away to try and support yourself, uh, there, there's a surrender to gravity that travels through your structure. If it's successful, <laughs> if it's not successful, you fall over, right? And when you're trying to balance, you'll have all of these sort of holding patterns. Uh, well, not holding patterns. So you'll have this proprioceptive responsiveness where your body automatically um, responds this way and that to try and support through your structure. And, and uh, you know, you can, um, if you do that when you're standing, um, it's pretty obvious. You don't have to think about if you if you balance on a foot. You don't have to think about whether you press down on the inside or the outside. Uh, what what happens is is the foot does its thing as you get on with breathing and and trying to relax in space. Yeah, and uh, you know uh, I'm, I've obviously practiced this, so so it's uh, my body does it quite well, and I've worked out how to rest through. Um, through through my structure to the ground and allow the forces of support to travel up through my structure. So, but what's going on with the foot is the ankle and the foot are doing this side to side thing, um, and that's called proprioceptive. Uh, these are proprioceptive response as it, responses, as in um, it's part of your natural nervous system um, that automatically uh, responds to the force of gravity and weight and imbalance. So I don't have to think about how I'm using my foot. I just let it do it. The thing that makes that complicated is if I am busy pushing the ground away and holding myself up, then I've got the, the difficulty of holding myself in position with, with the foot trying to do its proprioceptive thing at the same time. And um, because I'm busy with the effort of pushing the ground away, that leaves me unstable, and that's why people feel like uh, they can't balance, because they can't rest, they can't relax, they can't rely on their own feet to support them. Um, <clears throat> the, if you feel like your foot can't support you in a standing balance, then you will hold yourself stiff, which means that your foot won't be able to support you when you balance. So, so there's a sort of... Um, yeah, there's a, a feedback loop there that can make balances impossible for people that don't feel like they can balance, right? Same is true, uh, but the advantage of being able to balance, to, to be able to let go, 
into balance is your structure, the forces of support, uh, the forces of gravity kind of pull through your structure to support you, to so have that sense of freedom in space, whilst you rely on the natural responses to contact and weight, um, weight uh, bearing, I suppose, weight surrender. You, you rely on the way the body naturally responds to that, so it's not something you have to control. You see what I mean? The, the only thing you're controlling is where you are in space, as in you're, you're trying to stay upright. The advantages of that are you strengthen the proprioceptive responses that keep you balanced without having to hold. The, th the thing that makes people stiff and immobile is holding themselves in a position when they are upright, right? And most of us do that all day, every day, to some degree. But it's quite, it, it's, what's natural is to let go of that holding. You know, if, if you see someone holding themselves up, they look stiff, they look tense, they look like they're in the business of holding themselves up. When you see someone that's relaxed in the same situation, you see a relaxation. And you see that they're, they're not in the business of making something happen with their body. Right? The, that's one of the advantages. Is uh, you know when you are when you are able to relax into support and remain where you are, natural responses occur to support you. So things like and uh, uh, it's not just proprioceptive musculature around the joints. It's also your breathing gear. You know your your breathing mechanism. The core responses to when you're not holding yourself up with your spine, the core responses naturally kick in as you breathe and release. If you are holding yourself up with your spine, you're holding yourself up with your spine. Yeah? Um, another subject. Another advantage is when you can balance through your structure, and this is the sort of alignment principle, your structure sort of gets used to being in alignment, as in the forces of support from the ground up travel through you and the force of gravity down travels through you rather than makes you heavy. Right? So that it creates appropriate alignment when you can let go into natural proprioceptive responses to support. When you do that through your head, and you can practice this by uh, grabbing hold of a wrist and just using the weight of your relaxed shoulders to feel a sense of weight through your head you can play with how you meet that contact you know if you're busy pushing it away you'll be stiff if you're busy kind of retracting from the feeling of it then your spine will collapse and there'll be parts of that spine that um, that uh, complain about it and if you're taking weight through the, your head that'll be your neck and that's one of the things that people um, worry about when they're doing headstand. If what happens is that, then and you take weight through that, you're likely to end up with a neck problem. And it's the fear of the neck problem that gives you that, because you'll feel that pressure, you'll retract from it, and you don't like it, so you try and retract from it. And the same is true when you're the other way around, you know. If you, if you uh, put weight on your head and you don't like the feeling, then you try and retract from it so that when you, if you then force yourself to take weight through that, then you're taking weight through a collapsed neck, or not, not only a collapsed neck, a retracted neck. But if you can find that appropriate kind of response, and the way to find the appropriate the, the appropriate response is to look for support. So it's not you feeling the weight of your shoulders on your head. It's you, it's not you pushing that weight away. It's a relationship between that weight that you feel and your meeting of it. If you can find a sort of an equality in that, then you're left with a free neck. You're left with a free neck and a sense of support, as in 
you're meeting that contact, that weight, that feeling, in order to find support from it. So that's to do with your relationships to the sensation. And uh, people that don't like the feeling of pressure on their head will have a reaction to that feeling that causes a problem for their necks on some, on some level, right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, oh yes, and, uh, but if you can find that kind of equalness relationship, as in the weight equals your meeting of it, then the outcome is the weight that you're experiencing kind of does something to put the spine together through its axis. And that's, that's what you're looking for. And if you do this for any length of time, through the arriving and releasing breath, because it's the breath that needs to accommodate these actions. So if you breathe into the contact between head and hands, without pushing the hands away necessarily, if you release the breath into that contact, what you'll probably notice is a feeling of something traveling down the spine at the back. So if you breathe into that contact as if you're looking for support, and then when you release the breath into that same contact, two things happen. The rounded part of the spine from the bump of the base of the neck down drops through the body to the ground, which makes you taller. And the result is that the elongating spine has a stronger force of support through to the, where, the, where the weight is. And it's that elongating spine pressing into the support through your head that means you can relax into headstand as you let go of the breath. All right? That's the advantage of it. Now, if being in position causes fear, you can do this. And you're doing headstand. You're working out headstand. And if you want to, um, well, a more weight will, will require and lead to more integration through the spine from the head down. And let's face it, most of us are disconnected between head and body. And it's from the head down that the, most of the problems lie. So a headstand can be an incredibly useful way of aligning yourself through your spine from the head down. So uh, let's take that, this into physical practice, into direct headstand. Okay, <clears throat> so first of all, I'm going to just quickly look at um, the, 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 there's two fundamental ways that people think of using their base in, heads, in headstand. One is to, the, the more commonplace one, is to grab hold of your, the back of your head and pull, right? Which I was taught was incorrect because the action of pulling causes a strain in the neck. And it does, if what you're doing is pulling on your head. <laughs> but, um, and the thing that I was taught was you're meant to find support. So instead of pulling in, you push out. So I was taught to press, press out through my hands so that I felt supported as I arrived, okay? Both of those, um, both of those actions, both of those instructions have good intent. They both involve the idea of supporting yourself. The, pull, the pulling in um, is a way of you using your arms to support yourself as you attempt to rest through your head. The pushing out is an attempt to use the ground to support yourself. They're both support. So which one is right? The answer is there isn't such a thing as right. It's both of those actions, the pushing and the pulling, the drawing in and the pushing away, are proprioceptive actions of your arms when you're trying to 
st uh, balance on your head and your arms, right? Just like the, the way the, the head meets contact or retracts from contact. You know, if you're busy pushing away, then you need to let that weight come through you and then meet that support from the spine. Yeah? So the answer is they're both correct. But neither of them, the pulling in or the pushing out, neither of those things are the thing you need to do to stay in headstand. They are both things that happen naturally in response to balance. Okay? There are advantages in both. The pushing away gives you the space for the spine to elongate so your head can get to the ground in a way that allows it to elongate. The pulling in, on the other hand, the gathering in, is also a supportive act that brings that rounded part of the spine through the body, closer to the ground. So if, if you're trying to find the right and wrong of it, which might be appropriate, especially if you have only a push away action or only a pull in action. The appropriate thing to do is to look at the advantages of both. So the gathering towards you feeling is the thing that brings your head towards the ground. If you're busy pushing away, then you can't even get your head to the ground without um, taking weight through your neck. Right? So the pulling, the gathering towards, if you relax your spine, will bring the spine closer to contact, closer to the, through the body, closer to the contact. And then the, when you get there, if, you, if you're giving weight to that, the pushing away will act as a sort of proprioceptive balancing like your feet do, you see? You need both. You need to be able to, the, the gathering in would happen naturally with gravity as you relax. And the pushing away will be the natural proprioceptive responses of supporting yourself. So what you need to do in approach is to find a relationship to your touch that is supportive, whether you're pulling in to bring yourself there or pushing out to support the weight. You need both to be possible. And within that, you might find a way of stacking through the spine. The gathering in brings the upper spine through so that you don't push against your neck, so your weight isn't heavily on your neck. The gathering in brings the upper spine underneath the neck through to support, and then the touch, the outward touch, supports you. And if that's kind of relaxed in that you're giving your weight to your elbows, your wrists and your head. <sighs> then the job when you get there is to relax, to relax within so that the movements of breathing happen as a result of letting go into your support and the movements of releasing the breath is an inward dissolving that allows your bones to relax through to the natural proprioceptive responses of the arms and the top of the head. In other words, release your weight. Okay. And then if you fall over, you fall over. And because you're not holding, you won't fall over in that sort of outward push kind of way, which will hurt you. 
you're, you're, when you, if you fall, you trust, you relax, you, you curl up. Okay? Um, the, and the, one of the main reasons I like to do headstand, well, there's, there's a few reasons. Um, one is the precision of it requires that my mind doesn't get too distracted, which is uh, why I wasn't speaking quite so much. And so that's good for the mind. And, and I, 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 get a feel, I get this sort of um, imagined feeling of kind of emptying the clutter in my head into the ground when I get to that relaxed place, release place. And the other advantage is when you're used to relaxing your weight through your head and the result is support that travels back through your spine from the bump of the base of the neck down to the spine behind the heart, you understand, well, you get to experience and the body gets familiar with that relationship to the space above you. You're inverting it so you can develop a relationship through your crown to above you and you're using gravity to give you a definitive sense of that and a reason for the body to respond. And if you get to the place of learning how to relax in a way that doesn't make you fall over, and is it, you know, if it does make you fall over, put your feet on the wall or, or something until you can work it out, well, once you've got over the fear, um, that, that the natural kind of responsiveness to the space above your head is how we are meant to be upright and it's through released movements of breathing so you let go to breathe and you get a relationship between above and below if i was upside down it would still be a relationship to above and below and you let go to release the breath you let go within yourself and i've got that same relationship so i can remain present to where i am in space and not be busy holding myself up so it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a good practice. It's very useful. If you have fear around it, then it might be worth getting over it. If you really don't want to go there, then you can practice taking weight through your head. And that'll give you something similar. And it's something you can do in the office, you know. Uh, if you're at a desk and your back hurts or your neck hurts, just do that for a few moments. Take weight through your head, relax your shoulders, see if the spine can wake up. So that'll do from me. Um, yes, I think that, that, that's enough for this week. Uh, I'll be doing my regular Saturday morning um, workshop this weekend. I haven't got it up on the website yet, but I'll try and do that later on today. Um, I've nearly completed um, the on-demand version of Sacred Breath 2 Foundation course. For anyone that wants to, that missed that and wants to dive in, um, That'll be up and available on the membership page of my website soon. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm moving, moving in that direction. When I do, when I do courses, uh, and all my courses are up there now, it's ava available uh, for people that um, want to dive deep into the experience. Uh, I'm, I'm moving towards that. Um, I've got the information out there. I've got, I've got the, the guidance out there, and the, the, the courses are always uh, recorded with a live group so that um, it's not just theory, you know, it's, it's not just an agenda of information. It's an interactive thing where I, I show, uh, where, where I sort of connect the content to, to real live um, matters of interest for the participants. And, and we all have things in common, so, sorry. Uh, we, we, we all have similar some of the things going on. So, um, yes, uh, uh, the course is run uh, with uh, life participants tend to be more organic and more uh, relevant to, to you, even when you're watching it on demand, you see. So anyway, that's the way I'm going. It's all my, all my content, everything that I understand and know, um, I'm, I'm putting it together into, into on-demand format so that if I decide that I don't want to do uh, 
I don't want to be public anymore, um, then um, there's still resources out there. So, so my work still can be of use to people. Um, but um, that being said, I'm still doing my Saturday mornings uh, workshops. Uh, they're always so they're always about um, nurturing, self-nurturing, and self-care. And um, if you have anything particular in your own practice that you'd like to resolve, the best way to do that is to do that with me watching you practice. And uh, the cheapest way of doing that is by joining one of my workshops. And um, online, I can see everyone, everything that's going on for everyone. And uh, if I if I miss miss something, then you just ask, you know, and uh, it becomes part of the content of the workshop. So um, join me on a Saturday if you want to work with me, or you can book a free 15 minute consultation if you're not sure um, whether uh, working with me is a way to go. You can, you know, you can if you, if you're undecided and you want to find out if I can help, just book a free 15 minute thing. It's, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and uh, I'm, I, I like, I do like um, sharing what I, know, what I understand and sharing solutions with people if they're interested. So go ahead, you know, and book yourself a free consultation. And uh, if you've got an ongoing physical issue, um, people that work with me regularly um, get to a place of solution usually. And um, in the process, the investigation of the core issue and how, to, how the whole person can resolve it leads to changes in life, leads to changes in, in self, you know? Um, so it's, it's proper self-development if you want to work with me on a, on a proper level. All right then, um, yeah, that's me for now. Uh, I will be available for um, Yoga Solutions Live next week. Uh, I, if I don't get any questions, I may or may not put one on, but um, feel free when I, when I post the, um, well, just any time on, on my Yoga with Mark group, you can ask me a question. And uh, if I get questions, I'll happily put out um, some responses on my uh, on these Tuesday sessions. All right. Okay. Until the next time, much love to you all. I've been Mark J. Aquaviva. Stay well. I know. <laughs>